Those of you who were once students here and are now back may not recognize the place because it looks very different. We have a huge new building under construction. The old buildings sparkle and have been renovated and look like they haven't looked for a very long time. There's an energy and a dynamism in the air that is really all due uh, to Dean Kate. And we're very, very lucky to have had her as our dean here in the last five years. And we're especially lucky to have her here today to uh, welcome you and to kick us off. So with that, Dean Kate. Uh, thank you, Phil, and welcome everyone. Welcome to Harvard Law School, and welcome to this USB Microsoft 10 Years Later conference, which um, is going to be terrific, I think. Thank you all for coming back. Uh, those of you who came out of the case thinking of yourselves as winners, those of you who came out of the case thinking of yourselves as losers, we're especially grateful to you. It's, uh, it's, it, it's, uh, it's great that this collection of people um, came together 10 years later to think about what USB Microsoft meant, what we learned from it, uh, what questions are still to be resolved after it. This was, as I don't need to tell you, one of the most important antitrust trials of the 20th century. It was possibly the first important case of the 21st century. And this is an opportunity really to reflect on the learning and experience of the last 10 years to explore uh, the meaning of the case for Microsoft, for the software and technology industries generally, and for antitrust law and enforcement. Uh, and to do that, of course, we have um, uh, this quite really stunning array of panelists and participators, uh, people who were very much a part of the case and making crucial decisions on the case, as well as uh, leading economic and uh, economists and legal academics to, to provide a little bit of detachment and, um, and to add their voices as we consider uh, what we learned from the case. Now, I was just stunned, I have to say. You know, I'm the dean of Harvard Law School, so that means that with respect to any issue, I think about its relationship to Harvard Law School. And, and sometimes you have to stretch a little bit to do that, you know? <laughs> But it, it turns out that with respect to US and Microsoft, you don't. And I'm just going to bore you for just a, a few minutes while I tell you about the people who were involved in US and Microsoft that um, were connected to Harvard Law School, mostly as our graduates. Uh, in no particular order, other than the order that this list was given to me. Joel Klein, 71, class of 71, was of course assistant AG in charge of the antitrust division at the time and launched the investigation of Microsoft that led to the case and oversaw the case through the trial and remedy. Judge Thomas Penfield Jackson, who decided the case at the district court level, was a graduate of Harvard Law School, class of 1964. Janet Reno, attorney general, during the decision to sue and then the trial and the remedy proceedings in the case, class of 1963. Doug Melamed, is Doug here yet? but not here, here, okay. Uh, Joel's principal deputy, who was um, uh, assistant, uh, de principal deputy assistant attorney general during the investigation and trial of the case, and then acting assistant attorney general after Joel left, and widely seen as one of the key intellectual and legal architects of the government's case, class of 1970. Uh, Larry Lessig, who was appointed by Judge Jackson as special master, in the consent decree enforcement contempt proceeding. Uh, later, that appointment was vacated, but Larry Lessig was a Harvard Law School professor at the time. Jonathan Zittrain, sitting uh, right here next to me, uh, uh, class of 95, and a current Harvard Law School professor, was Lessig's assistant in his special master work. Uh, at the time, he was um, uh, founder of the Berkman Center. He still is founder of the Berkman Center, but- you Can't take that away from no, me. No, you can't. <laughs> John Roberts, since gone on to bigger and better things, argued portions of the case on appeal to the DC Circuit uh, while at Hogan and Hartson, alongside DOJ on behalf of the plaintiff states, class of 1979. Tom Miller, Attorney General of Iowa, one of the leaders of the working group of state AGs who coordinated the state's role in the litigation, appeal, and settlement, class of 1969. Uh, we're going to just go on a little bit. We're going to turn the page. I just, I'm just going to tell you a few more names <laughs> who are here, so I have to be able to say the names who are here. 
Jeff Gladner, class of 1980, was Joel's special counsel for information technology during the trial and acted as Joel's sort of point person and go-to guy for much of the trial. Is his Jeff around here? He's supposed to be. Um, Phil Malone, of course, was the lead DOJ lawyer in charge of the investigation leading up to the case and of the consent decree enforcement contempt proceeding. Um, uh, uh, filed in 1997, the lead career in civil service DOJ lawyer on the trial team. He is now a clinical professor at Harvard Law School and, of course, the organizer of this conference. Steve Howe, chief of the Antitrust Bureau of the New York AG's office during the investigation and trial, uh, who has returned to work on compliance monitoring of the final judgment for the states as a special counsel class of 1972, Michael Lacavara, one of the Sullivan and Cromwell lawyers who spearheaded Microsoft's defense trial, class of 1988, Ted Edelman, another of the Sullivan and Cromwell team from Microsoft, class of 1983, David McIntosh was Judge Jack Jackson's law clerk during the trial itself and largely responsible for drafting the findings of fact, class of 19, uh, 1998, and finally, I've gotten to the end, Tim Ehrlich, who was Judge Jackson's law clerk during the conclusions of law and remedy phase of the case, class of 1999. So, uh, was there anyone who wasn't from Harvard Law School? <laughs> oh, well, maybe a few, David Boyes, or Bill Newcomb, or, you know, a few others. But, but uh, this is quite the list. So, I have to, we own USB Microsoft. <laughs> And, uh, we should have sold it a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> and for that reason, I am especially particularly glad that uh, here we are at this conference investigating and exploring its continuing significance and, and what it uh, teaches us about a wide range of uh, continuing extremely important subjects. Um, before I hand this back to Phil, I, I do want to thank for the uh, great work that he's done, not just at Harvard Law School generally, and at the Cyber Law Clinic of the Berkman Center of Internet and Society, but, um, but really in organizing this, uh, this wonderful collection of people to talk about this very important issue. Uh, so with that, Phil. No.